Do you have to sell your soul to make it in the music business? What's up guys, Brandon here from KDMR Music, the channel making you a more successful musician through videos about music marketing, music strategy, and sometimes I break down music industry rumors in videos just like this one if you're interested in that type of content. Consider subscribing. Now, about a year ago, I did a video talking about the dark side of the music industry. And the whole intent of that video was to kind of show you, you know, the downsides that come with trying to make music your career or your business. Um, and overwhelmingly, what I got in the comments was, what about the satanic ritual? What about selling your soul? What about human sacrifices? And I was just like, whoa, whoa, what is going on? There's a whole lot of stuff that I did not, you know, allude to and um, some stuff that's just kind of far fetched. But I want to talk about it because while no, I don't have any sort of knowledge of the Illuminati or anything, there are some things that you do need to consider when it comes to a career in music that could mean some compromises on your part. So we're going to talk about what all that means and whether or not you do have to sort of sell your soul to fit into the mold of the music industry. Now, before we do, I have to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, DistroKid. Now, you guys know DistroKid is the best way to get your music in iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, you know, all the major players. You pay one low cost every year and you can upload as much music as you want, like for as little as $19.99 a year. That's insane. So if you want to get a discount on your DistroKid membership, use the link in the description below. But thanks again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Do you have to sell your soul to have a career in the music industry? And um, I mean, short answer is no. Long answer is not necessarily, but possibly, yeah, if you consider this and this and this and this. So let's start the consideration. Now, for purposes of this video, the way I am describing or defining selling your soul is really compromising your moral values in any way, right? Um, for a long time, it's been like a pretty big conspiracy theory, um, especially among Christian circles, that the music industry is just straight up run by satanic forces and that to get to a certain level, you've got to like operate in Freemasonry and all sorts of stuff. Now, I've never worked high enough in the music industry to tell you that I've seen like this type of weird party or that type of weird ritual. I don't have those kinds of stories. Everyone that I've met in the music industry um, has had a few things in common if they've had any sort of success. One, they've been incredibly hardworking. Uh, two, they've been really smart, like really intelligent. And then three, they've made some intense sacrifices. And I don't mean sacrificing human bodies. I mean, sacrificing like all the things that normal people don't consider that goes into having a career in music, right? These are people who don't really see their families often. These are people that don't get to settle down and don't get to, you know, take days off. Uh, I had an uncle who used to work for a major uh, record label. I still have the uncle. He just doesn't work for the label anymore. And he told me about like his time at the label. He was making more money than he had made in his life. He got to work on some awesome projects for artists like Brandy and uh, Lil' Kim and Aaliyah. But he's also told me this was some of the most stressful times in his life because there's so much pressure to perform. And, you know, even though you've got all these great benefits like massage therapy and vacation time and all that. You don't feel like you can take that time because the work that's on your desk is just stacking up and there's it's there's so much at stake. Um, and, you know, the music industry is an industry of personalities and it's an industry of personal reputation. So every big move could catapult you to a bigger one. But on the contrary, every misstep that you take could be the misstep that gets you booted all the way out of the industry. So there's a lot that you have to consider, and that's just working at a label. We're not even talking about being the artist, right? So most of you guys that I talk to on this channel, your interest is building a career as a successful musician. And for some of you, 
That means you want to be at the highest heights of the industry. You want to be on Billboard. You want to be uh, hosting or you want to be the musical guest on Jimmy Kimmel Late Night. Like you want to be on Saturday Night Live. You want all of those big major looks. You want to be on daytime TV. You want your name in lights. You want to headline huge stadium tours, right? And so for that, there are some things that you're going to need to consider, right? Because the question is, will you have to compromise your moral values in order to get that type of status, in order to be that ubiquitous of a presence? And the one, I guess what I'll try to break down for you is sort of the concept of marketability, right? When a record label or any sort of entity sees you as marketable, what they mean is that, hey, I can put this person in front of a whole lot of people and it's likely that those people will buy. Those people will give us money. Those people will pay for tickets. They'll pay for merchandise, whatever, right? So when you're marketable, it means you are uh, enjoyable for a wide swath of people, right? It means that you uh, are appealing to a large majority of any particular population. So if I say you're popular or you're uh, marketable among the urban audience, great. You're marketable among the mainstream audience, great. Like So these are different subsets of uh, the buying public that you could potentially be uh, a moneymaker for. And in order to be that marketable on that level, as opposed to uh, operating in niche markets, like I recommend to most indie artists, you've got to be like, it's either you are like super, super unique or you're very much the same, right? It's, it's kind of, it's, it's one or two, right? And, uh, because you can be marketable forever, or you can be marketable for a time. Uh, and so a lot of what makes a person marketable is relatability. And when you talk about being relatable to a huge amount of people, what that does is it takes the nuances off of your life, right? If you are a devout Christian and you decide, hey, I'm going to have a career in the music industry and you're not going to make Christian music necessarily, right? Then what that means is to be marketable or to be relatable to the actual public, you probably won't get to talk about your religion as much. And that's a decision you got to make, right? Because if that is your line of compromise, then stepping across that line can very much feel like selling your soul, right? Uh, let's see, if you are someone who, let's say you're a woman in the industry or you're a woman musician and you know you want your your whole career to really be about your talent, your voice, your skills, right? Then some of the things that people do in order to get more eyes on themselves, you may not want to do. You may not want to dress less. You may not want to, I don't know, twerk on camera or whatever. Whatever we see like popular mainstream uh, women in music do. Uh, that gets the virality and gets all the clicks and all the views, right? You may not be down for that sort of a program. And, you know, if you decided to cross over that line, then that could very much feel like selling your soul. There is a such thing as compromise and there is a such thing as, you know, a reduction of value when you start talking about trying to ascend to the highest levels of the music industry. Now, you could be the biggest Christian artist in the world. You could be the biggest gospel artist in the world. You could be the biggest folk singer in the world. But if you want to be the biggest singer in the world, then unfortunately, a lot of those different quirks, a lot of the things that make you you, you have to find ways to show um, show that like kind of in a secondary vein, right? And it, not, it can't necessarily lead your marketing efforts. And that's why we tend to have a very one-dimensional view of a lot of major celebrities or especially major level musicians. Uh, because we tend to see like, for example, I, I use Drake as an example on this channel a lot because I was a big fan of Drake when he was on the rise. He was kind of starting his superstar status when I was in college. So when I discovered Drake, 
discovered. When I heard Drake for the first time, he was very much like an underground sort of lyrical rapper. And the bigger he's gotten, the less of that sort of underground backpack lyrical style that we fell in love with. We get less and less of that on every project, right? And to a hardcore hip hop fan, that can be frustrating. But to Drake, maybe his goal wasn't ever to be the best rapper in the world. Maybe his goal was to be the biggest artist in the world. But those are two different things. And the path you take to those positions are very different from each other. Now, again, this video is about selling your soul. And I'm not going to lie, right? Uh, as a Christian, you know, I know the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The way I like to put that is where there's an opportunity to make money, there is also the opportunity for corruption. And the music industry is rife with scammers and predatory practices and people who will try to lock you up into unfair contracts and steal all your money and leave you out to dry when you are no longer the next big thing. And yes, that happens all the time. I mean, Meg Thee Stallion is going through contract issues even now, even as she's one of the biggest artists in the world, you keep hearing things about the label that she signed to when nobody knew who she was and how she feels like the contract was unfair. They feel like she's trying to skirt around them and it gets really messy. And she's not the only one. I was just reading about all the drama between DJ Drama and Don Cannon and Lil Uzi Vert, another person who, you know, got a huge level of success felt like the terms were unfair and now you know him and his label are fighting uh and you know we also hear artists like chance the rapper who are kind of avoiding the major label system at all costs um and they've also got their own stories of how the labels vilify them or protect or prevent them from working with their friends and all sorts of stuff like that right so where there's a huge amount of money to be made there's always the opportunity for someone to take things left for someone to just honestly act like a demon, you know what I'm saying? Act like a devil. like, And we see that all the time. And so, and there's also people who try to use their influence or use their position to honestly just get nonsense out of people, right? Like you hear about the, the engineer who would only give a girl studio time if she performed certain acts for them. You hear about like, Radio personalities who are like, oh, I'll put you on this show, but you got to give me X amount of money. You hear about photographers being predatory. Like you hear all sorts of stories about predatory practices, and that's not unique to the music industry. I think why it comes up in the music industry so much is because the people who join the industry are so wide eyed and they're so excited about this opportunity. They don't think they can get anywhere else. And so they trust people that you wouldn't normally trust if you were going into any other sort of business venture. And there are questions that should be asked that unfortunately a lot of young musicians just don't know to ask or don't care to ask. And so they're taken advantage of a lot. But can you be successful while skirting around all of these different potential pitfalls? The answer is yes, but that depends. Because what kind of success are you talking about? If you don't want to make the compromises necessary to be the biggest artist in the world, can you settle for just being financially successful? Can you settle for being, you know, the best artist in your three state area? Can you settle for, you know, never selling a lot of records, but always performing sold out shows in small clubs across the country and even internationally? Does that success look good to you? Because if that type of success looks good to you, then you can absolutely be successful. You can absolutely live the dream. There are artists doing it every single day. There are plenty of people who make music for a living on their own terms without being bothered by all the hubbubaloo of the major music industry. You can be one of those people too. I've got plenty of resources. There's a whole channel right here. There's over 300 videos on this channel teaching you how to be successful. I believe that the best way 
to uh, build a successful career is to go directly to your fans. I've got a free training that you can take in the description below that explains the fan journey and the five steps from taking people from complete stranger to super fan. So I'd love to help you out. So I hope to see you on this channel in other videos if this was your first one. Check me out and let me know what you think. If you've got a question about navigating this in industry, let me know in the comments down below and I'll address it in the video in the future. Until then, be safe, be well, keep dreaming, and work hard to make those music business dreams your reality. Peace.